four people, eight meals, under a hundred dollars. That's $25 a person, aprons on, let's go. I am so glad you're here. I'm gonna share with you how you can save some money making some make ahead and freezer meals with a small budget. I am partnering up with Walmart this week to help me out with this. If you wanna stay on budget, pay less for your groceries, check out Walmart. You can use their pickup and delivery service, have their personal shoppers do the shopping for you, keep you out of the store, and if you're a new customer and you use the code TRIPLE10, you can save $10 off your first three orders with a $50 minimum. The majority of the ingredients of these meals, I'm using Walmart's private brands. They're so good. You're gonna see how your meals can still pack a punch and not leave a dent in your wallet. I make make ahead and freezer meals during the holidays all the time. Let's prepare some herb chicken with roasted veggies. So I shot my shelves, already had some uh, potatoes that I need to use up. So let me share with you the rest of the ingredients that I don't have to do hardly any prepping for. I absolutely enjoy their market side veggie medley with broccoli, carrots, and cauliflower. This is one of my favorite fresh bags to get. Love this. And we're gonna use some frozen Brussels sprouts and some already chopped cubed sweet potatoes. Sweet. So all I need to do is work on my potatoes and I might actually throw in some fresh onion as well. I'm just going to use up these potatoes before we get out of town and I'm going to cube these up. So our son is graduating the army and he actually gets to come home on leave before he ships out. This week I'm getting ready for that, you know, finishing all our holiday preparations that we need to do. So by having these meals in the fridge and freezer, it's going to make this week and coming back with meals ready to go so much nicer because it just helps us get one step ahead with all the crazy busyness of this season. I'm gonna make dinner for tomorrow night in here. I'm gonna cook it up all ahead. All we need to do is dish up and reheat it. And then we're gonna make one for the freezer in our aluminum pan. I'm gonna have the chicken on top. So we're gonna load up our potatoes and then I'm gonna do my onions. We're gonna take our veggie medley and add that in. Awesome, one bag, two meals. And then this is just a one pound bag of the sweet potatoes cube. I didn't wanna do any more chopping and peeling than I needed to. Then I'm gonna use Brussels sprouts. What's great about some of their great value frozen vegetables is that you can actually heat them up in the microwave right in this bag. These are big guys, oh yeah. I have some salted butter that I'm gonna cube up and place in between all of this goodness. I have some chicken bouillon here that I'm just going to sprinkle on top. And I'm also gonna salt and pepper this. Okay, you could do skin on or skin off. Go crazy with your herbs and, and spices. I just went in and grabbed a tablespoon of paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, thyme, tarragon, parsley, salt and pepper. So what we're gonna do is coat our chicken. Those herbs are gonna get on the veggies as well. I love tarragon with my potatoes. I am not shy when it comes to herbs and spices. You could also do this recipe with chicken thighs as well. I just love the affordability of chicken drumsticks. And if you work and you've already made this ahead of time wrapped in your fridge, if someone's already home, like the kids, call them up at a certain time and say, hey, get the oven at 375 degrees and throw that in. You could be driving home from work and you've got dinner waiting for you. My mom would make these type of chicken recipes for us as kids growing up all the time. We're gonna wrap this in foil it's going in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes covered. And then we'll take it off. And then you can get the top all nice and roasted. Mm -mm -mm. Basically you're cooking it um, until your potatoes are tender, but you, basically your chicken needs to get to 165 degrees. Now you can put plastic wrap over this and then your aluminum foil to protect it even more in the freezer. But when you do that, make sure you take the plastic off, take the aluminum foil off, then the plastic, don't bake it like that. But since we'll come back next week with our son and this will be ready to go, I'm just gonna put aluminum foil on it and I'll double this up. Put a label on it so you know what it is. So if you have this wrapped good, this can actually last three, four months in your freezer. Just make sure you have it sealed good. Look at that chicken. It smells insane. Everything looks like it roasted up beautifully. I wish you could smell this. Look how good this Brussels sprout is. Oh, and it's nice and tender. Mmm, that is cooked 
perfect. Let's get the sweet potato mm, with a carrot. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Those sweet potatoes are good. Look at that chicken. That is cooked perfect. There is so much flavor in this meal, you guys, and it's easy to put together. This is so filling, tons of flavor. With the chicken and the bags of vegetables, I was able to get two meals. We're gonna make the next few meals with a ham. And this is Walmart Sam's Choice Brown Sugar Double Glazed Ham. This is our favorite ham. You can make a lot of meals with a ham. We actually love cooking this up in our slow cooker. Add pineapple on top, slow cook that baby for like four hours. You're basically heating it through, so don't overcook it. The flavor in this is amazing. It's sliced up to this point. All this is nice and sliced for us. I'm just gonna come in with my knife and just detach it. I have the ham split up, so this is all the nice thick portions of the ham. Here's all the slices of ham, and then we have the ham bone with some more ham. And this is perfect for my split pea soup. The flavor that's in this brown sugar ham is so, so good that it goes well with any recipe. And it definitely is delicious with our split pea soup. I'm not gonna make it tonight. I'm gonna put this into the freezer. So let me share with you our split pea soup recipe. So I have a ham bone in here with some chopped up ham. And then I'm putting a whole bag, about uh, a pound, 16 ounces of split pea. We're going to need eight cups of water, two medium potatoes cubed, large onion chopped, two medium carrots, a half cup of celery, five teaspoons of chicken bouillon granules. Going to need a teaspoon of marjoram, a teaspoon of poultry seasoning, about two teaspoons of sage, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a teaspoon of basil. I'm just going to keep it on low for six to eight hours. Oh, the house smells amazing. Would you look at that? And I have rolls in the oven waiting for us. Oh, look at that bite. That brown sugar ham is just so good in this soup. You can make this soup on your stovetop or the slow cooker. Either way, it is delicious. So with all that ham, let's make some breakfast with it. We're gonna make a cheesy broccoli ham bake. So for this recipe, we're gonna use some broccoli florets. I want them a little softer for this recipe and I can put them in hot water and blanch them and all that, but I am not gonna let it take that long. So what I'm gonna do is put this in a bowl with a few tablespoons of water and put it in the microwave. First, I'm gonna chop it up a bit, just a little more than what this is. I already bought like a couple of weeks ago some mozzarella cheese. I'm going to shred up about a cup of this. I have 10 eggs in here and what I'm going to do is just beat them up. I and have my there. cooked broccoli. Two cups of that diced ham. I have some mozzarella cheese. Yes, please. You can use any cheese really in here. In my fridge, I had some green onions. Let's get some that going on in here. We're gonna do some pepper, seasoned salt. All right, and then I'm gonna pour my egg in. It's gonna look like it's not gonna be enough egg, but it will. The oven is at 375 degrees, and this is gonna bake for 35, 45 minutes. Oh yeah. Can you hear that sizzle? Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. This is an easy, easy little egg broccoli ham bake that does not take any time at all. The brown sugared ham, again, the flavor of it just makes this almost like decadent. It's just so good. That broccoli is so good. Now you can make this ahead of time, like I just did. Keep it in your refrigerator. You can also make these into little egg muffin cups. You can also freeze it after this point, but this is a great make ahead and freezer meal. So with that other portion of ham, we are going to make a filling ham and bean soup. Okay, I have my pot warming up. To the bottom, I'm gonna add some olive oil. And we're gonna saute up the onions, the carrots, some celery. So not bad for the chopping I'm doing on this week's meals. Less than what I usually do, that's for sure. We're gonna saute this up for about four to five minutes. Some fresh garlic in, stir this around, cook it for about Nah, less than a minute. Use 64 ounces of chicken broth. Okay, now I'm gonna add my chicken stock so that way we don't burn the garlic. Okay, I'm gonna add a bay leaf in. And I shop my shelves and I'm gonna add a can of diced tomatoes. Some Italian seasoning in. I'm just gonna do a palm full. 
And I'm gonna do some coarse pepper. Then I'm gonna add two cans, so it's about a pound of Great Northern beans. You can use navy beans, kidney beans. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil so it'll help cook those carrots a little longer. Three and a half cups of that ham. Oh yeah, let's get that in there. That's gonna flavor this so good, you guys. I'm gonna try a new ingredient in this soup. Saw a recipe where someone added shredded cabbage. So I noticed when I was shopping online that Walmart's market side brand had some angel hair coleslaw. I didn't have to chop up the cabbage or anything. So we're gonna add this in there. Two cups of that cabbage. My family loves cabbage. Oh, look at that. The flavor in this is so good. Who doesn't love a good ham and bean soup? What beans do you like to add to your soup? That ham is so tender. I really love it with the cabbage in it. I'm gonna do that from now on. And having that bag already finely shredded just helped save a step. So this is all the sliced ham that is left. So this is perfect to add on salads this week, add to any recipe, but the majority of this is gonna be used for sandwiches. So we're gonna make this yummy, creamy tortellini soup. It is so good, it's one of our family favorites, but I'm totally going to do it different this week. We're gonna make things fast and we're gonna try some new ingredients straight from the freezer section that we can add into our soup to make it quicker and maybe add even more flavor. So I'm gonna brown up some of the Great Value Italian sausage. So for this, you're gonna need the Great Value Cheese Tortellini Oh, it's so good. The pasta is filled with ricotta, mozzarella, and Romano cheeses. Oh, it's our favorite. We always have a bag in our freezer. Now you can use frozen spinach or fresh spinach. We always keep a bag of frozen spinach in our freezer. And I am doing it differently today. I wanna try something new with our tortellini soup. And we're gonna do this seasoning blend straight from the freezer. Instead of my carrots, I am replacing that with chopped onions, celery, red peppers, green peppers, and parsley flakes already done for us. Quick dump, go. Make this a freezer meal. The only thing you would have to do to get ahead is to cook up your sausage. We love using old ice cream containers. They're perfect for soup freezer meals. So all you have to do is just dump all these ingredients in there. No chopping, nothing. And that's what we're going to do for this slow cooker meal. And then you're going to add your beef broth. You can use half and half heavy whipping cream, milk, or evaporated milk. But you want something a little thicker than milk. But if I'm going to make this a freezer meal, I'm going to switch this out for heavy cream. And actually, heavy whipping cream freezes so so well, better than half and half. So you can add that in with your soup container if you're freezing it. If you're a little nervous that it's gonna be too thick for you with that heavy cream, just pour a little milk in and you're good to go. Shop my shelves, already had garlic on hand. We're gonna mince that up and throw it in. Italian seasoning, salt this, probably about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. You could do this in the slow cooker or on your stove top. I'm just gonna pop the lid on and let this cook on low for four hours. You could even check it since everything is cooked. Cheese tortellini's already in there frozen. You'll probably have this within the two hours, you guys. Look at that. Oh, come on, look how good. Okay, if you want to thicken it, what you could do is add some cornstarch and water to it. All right, let's dish this up. Look how big those cheese tortellinis are and all that yummy spinach. It is creamy. The flavor is amazing. Those frozen veggies sure gave this a different flavor and I absolutely love it. You can still add your carrots, but I'm telling you that frozen bag sure gave this recipe the zing it needed. It, the flavor in this is so good. Look at that. It fills up four containers. It makes a ton. Hun. So now we have dinner for one night, and I could put this in the freezer, and then we have dinner for another night. Of course, we're going to eat two for each night. So beautiful. I just got two meals out of that yummy, creamy tortellini soup. Definitely mix up your recipes. Try something new. Trying it with that yummy frozen blend of peppers and onions and celery just added a new layer onto the soup. We're gonna make one more meal and it is another soup. I think because it has been snowing here, very cold, 
I guess I'm needing more comfort food. So we're gonna make a creamy butternut squash soup. And with it, we're gonna make a really yummy Asian salad and we're gonna make some garlic knots and then we'll have a little treat at the end. To save time with roasting and chopping, I'm using Market Side's package of already chopped butternut squash. So it's already soft, so I'm just gonna take my immersion blender and get it smooth. We're gonna add some cinnamon, a half a teaspoon, and then a fourth a teaspoon of ginger, a fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg. Add a cup of chicken stock, two tablespoons of brown sugar. Now, for this point, if you wanted to make this a freezer meal, all you have to do is bag this up or put it in a container, and you can then do the steps I'm about to do later but this you can make into a freezer meal. Next, we're gonna take that pint of half and half and we're gonna add it to this. And then we're just gonna heat this through. So when you make this a freezer meal and want to heat it up, just make sure you have some half and half in the fridge. This intrigued me and I wanted to give them a try with this soup. Okay, these are from Market Side Savory Garlic Knots. Hand-tied, soft, buttery garlic knots. Bake fresh in the bag in minutes. Just heat and serve. So what they want you to do is put the bag down on a baking tray. Your oven needs to be preheated to 375 degrees. Place foil bag face down on baking sheet and make two to three small holes in the back of the bag to vent during baking. Bake for nine minutes. Remove from oven and let the bag sit for 60 seconds. Look at that. Have you guys had these before? I am so excited to try this. Oh, they smell insane. You know the kids are gonna love these. Oh my word. So the salad is basically green cabbage, green leaf lettuce, kale, red cabbage, carrots, green onion sliced, some wontons, and some sesame, ginger, and dressing that we're gonna add to it. So with our Asian salad, I wanna use up some of the spinach, and then we have salad to go along with our soup or any of the meals this week. So with my kitchen scissors, I went in and gave the spinach just a, a rough cut because they were just so big. I like Asian salad and then I never have it. But let me just tell you, this is so good. That dressing is perfect to me. It's not a heavy flavor and I think that's why I probably get turned off with Asian salad. But that ginger dressing is perfect. The notes in it are not overbearing or strong. It is so good. The flavor in it is so, so good. I'll be definitely getting this kit more often. Plenty for the family so we can have this with our soup or with any of the other meals. We're gonna have our soup now. It smells insanely good. That looks so decadent. What you can do is add a little dollop of sour cream to it. You can have fresh parsley on top as well. We gotta have this. Oh yeah, look at that. Just melt in there. And we made this so fast. So we got our help of the already cut up squash. Mm, that flavor is so, so good. This is such a nice light dinner or a lunch. But you know what? We gotta try the garlic knot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is so good. They're nice and soft. The garlic is not overpowering. It's not like, I thought maybe with it cooking in the bag, it'd be more greasy. That is delicious. It's soft. It's so soft. I'm gonna dip that in my soup. All right, that bag came with eight of these. We can each have two. This is a good lunch. This will probably be my lunch for the week right here. All right, I was able with my budget to sneak some sweets in there. So this is the Market Side Peppermint Bark. They bring it out every holiday season. I love it when this comes out. This is delicious. And then I absolutely love their assorted shortbread cookies. They are so buttery and light, and I don't make shortbread cookies, and I love snagging these. They're already decorated, they look so good. Plate them up, serve them up, and have them with your tea, your coffee, and absolutely delicious. I got eight meals, nine technically. Check out this video right here that I have for you. It'll definitely get you motivated to get things in your freezer and fridge for the week. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you soon. Bye.